So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Minka. Today I'm going to be talking about math science with the Angular compiler. Uh, so, a couple of more words about me. Uh, I'm quite active in the open source community. A few of the projects that I'm working on are Angular Seeds, Colalizer. I've been contributing to Angular Core and the Angular Mobile Toolkit. Also, Pact recently published the second edition of my book, Getting Started with Angular, where I had the privilege to get a technical review by Mishko Heavery. So, if you're just getting started with Angular, you might be interested to give it a try. But today's talk is going to be about the compiler and uh, what we can do with it. So we're just going to take a look at four projects that I've been working on over the past a couple of months. And uh, in order to get better context of how they work and what is their purpose, let's see how, what the compiler actually does and how it works internally. In general, the compiler is going to take our own Angular application and it is going to transform it in a way that it is going to be more efficient in terms of bundle size or in terms of runtime performance. So, for instance, the compiler is going to take this header component and out of it, it is going to generate another class. This class is going to take care of things such as rendering the component in the most efficient way and also instantiating the component's controller and using it as a context for the change detection mechanism. In short, the compiler just is going to generate more efficient views and also more efficient provider instantiation. So the individual providers, they're going to be instantiated in the most efficient manner just by inlining their dependencies inside of their factories or constructors. In one word, this is a transformation of our application. But is that everything that we can do with the compiler? Well, of course not. We can also take the intermediate representation of the source code of our application that it produces and analyze it somehow, or we can just visualize it in different ways. We can, of course, do much more, but today we're going to focus on these two points here. But first of all, let's answer the question how a compiler works in general, because conceptually all compilers are pretty similar. For instance, the Angular compiler performs similar Similar, it has similar phases of processing our program compared to the TypeScript compiler and so on. So a compiler, we can think of it as this blue box here. It accepts some inputs and produces an output. The input, in case of the TypeScript compiler, is going to be some TypeScript program like TypeScript files and also some tsconfig. The output it is going to be JavaScript and uh, on top of them some type declarations eventually. If we magnify a little bit, we will see that the compiler has a front-end and a back-end. The front-end, it is usually responsible for processing our program and uh, performing some transformations over the intermediate form that we're going to take a look at, and also the back-end, which takes this representation and generates some source code. We're mostly going to be interested in the front-end, so here are the typical modules that it has. It, it usually has a module for lexical analysis and a module for syntax analysis. This may sound a little bit fancy at first, but it's actually something quite simple. So we have our program, which is nothing more than just a string. We have the string uh, const product equals a multiplied by b, and so we're going to process it by using our function, which implements the lexical anal analyzer. It is going to produce a list or a stream of tokens, where each token is an object with two properties, lexeme, which is substring of the program that this token represents, and also a type which can be either a keyword, an identifier, operator, literal, or whatever. We're going to take this output right now and pass it to the module for syntax analysis. So out of it, and out of some grammar, the syntax analyzer is going to just produce a tree. This is just the abstract representation of our program, which is called an AST, or an abstract syntax tree. It turns out that these trees, they're very convenient for static code analysis. And the static code analysis is some kind of a pro program verification. So we're basically able to prove that our program has some properties without running it, just by taking a look at the source code. For instance, tools like uh, ESLint or TSLint and others, they're doing this. They're just parsing our source code and performing some analysis on top. Last year, I presented a talk about Colalizer, which is a tool which does something similar for Angular and specifically for the style guide. So it can pro prove that your program, your software is somehow compatible with the Angular style guide. Well, since then, its scope have grown a little bit. 
but uh, we're going to see how exactly. Internally, Colalizer uses the TypeScript compiler for producing, for going through lexical analysis and after that syntax analysis, just for producing KST, and it uses TSLint for reporting errors. So let's see how with Colalizer we can implement this style out of the Angular style guide that we need to use our, all our components as elements. So first, we're going to have our Angular component, which is just a string in the end. We're going to pass this string to the module for lexical an analysis of TypeScript, the function tokenize in this case. It is going to build the list of tokens. After that, we're going to pass these tokens to the parser of TypeScript. And this is going to produce an AST, which uh, looks something like this. Not exactly, but has similar shape. Now, in order to prove that our program has, our, our uh, component has selector of the appropriate type, we just need to traverse this tree. And the visitor pattern is very convenient for this. So we can just first visit the root node, which is the class element. Right after that, we're going to go through all the individual decorators. And it will turn out that one of these decorators is component. We're going to extract the metadata out of the object literal passed to the component decorator. And we're going to verify that the selector of the element here, of the component, is uh, of type element. If it is not, we're just going to report a warning. Here is how this looks visually. So we are visiting the class, the root node. We're going to the decorator. After that, we're extracting the metadata, the selector and the template in this case. And uh, in the end, we're just going to throw a warning. That's it. Now, uh, so far, we didn't do anything specifically for Angular. Well, this is achievable with tools like TSLint and TSLint, as already mentioned. The unique thing about Angular is that it is built with tooling in mind. So you can perform similar static code analysis on top of the templates and the styles as well, which is something pretty cool. In order to do this, let's see how we can find out whether we are using the styles inside of the styles property in our component metadata. So in this case here, we have that style. For instance, greeting span. This is misspelled. It is called spam instead of span. In the template, we have an H1 element with a span instead, but this style is not going to be applied. And the typical way of doing this is just by, well, running our program, seeing that the style has not been applied, and uh, trying to fix that. But once we have a lot of styles, it is hard to find all the dead styles. It is hard to find all the dead classes. And this can increase the bundle size of our application and reduce the performance. So instead of this, we can perform static code analysis and uh, find out all the dead styles as part of our build process, or even report them inside of our text editor. So we're going to build the AST for the uh, templates. Also, we're going to build the AST for the styles. We're going to match both ASTs against each other, and we're going to find out that this style is actually not in use. Here is how this looks in practice. So this is Colalizer, and it reports all the unused styles by using TSLint. We can either decide to fix typos or just drop all the new styles by using the auto fixes of TSLint. And that's it. This, this way, we can reduce the size of our application. Uh, of course, if we follow some conventions like uh, not adding styles dynamically with the renderer. Now, let's talk about something not that fun. It's uh, breaking changes. Although the Angular team, they did an amazing job in making sure that we almost have no breaking changes between version 2 and version 4, there are still some deprecations. We can migrate our application from, from version 2 to version 4 just with, by updating our dependencies, but uh, these deprecations is something that we need to take care of before version 5. For instance, the template is called ng template. We have renderer, which is renderer 2, and uh, so on. Let's think of the simplest possible migration strategy. Well, it can be, for instance, just finding string and replace for all the opening and closing uh, template stacks to ng template, right? However, this is not going to work in the general case. This component here is going to break our migration strategy uh, because, well, we have templates instead of our templates. We have the template element there. But we also mentioned the template opening tag here instead of the uh, property of our class. So we obviously want to migrate the template inside of our template, but we don't want to leave the, the other one untouched. Uh, here is a tool. Well, in, this means that we need to perform some kind of a context-aware replacements. So it sh we should perform the replacements only within of our templates, not commands and strings elsewhere. We can do this by, by uh, building this abstract syntax tree. 
And uh, let me show you what two I prototype over the last couple of weeks by using work by uh, Alex Eagle from the Angular Core team and TS Lint. So here is ng migrate. You can install it this way. But since I have it already installed, I can just run it on top of my TypeScript files. But before that, let's just take a look at the project. So uh, this project has one component called to-do component, which has similar situation. So we have the template element within of the template metadata. We have the template element here as well. We would want in the perfect case to replace this one, but leave this one untouched. Let's run this and see what's going to happen. So the tool found all the deprecations for us and suggests to fix them automatically for us. So to migrate our application to the new version of Angular automatically for us. Let's just trust the tool for now. Click yes. All right, so it fixed all the deprecations. Let's see if it broke our component. It turns out that it performed only the right step type of migrations. If we run, we're going to see that it has migrated our, int our inline and our external templates as well. So this way we can migrate from version to version in Angular just by running a simple script, which is much less error prone compared to doing it manually. Of course, it's not going to be possible for all the migrations, but uh, for a big part of them, the process is going to be just seamless. Now let's talk about uh, source code visualization. Well, now let's suppose that we're new to some huge project. We have a large Angular application that is being developed by a big team, and we're just hired to start working on it. In order to get on track as quickly as possible, we need to usually read the entire source code, I guess, but this is going to be very high to digest. Also, the different modules inside of this application, they are on different levels of abstraction, and in order to ap apply some more systematic way of uh, exploring the code, for instance, top-down or bottom-up, we need to figure out how are they located into, we need to just sort them out by their level of abstraction and uh, apply this strategy. So that's why, because also people are good in visual thinking, there are a lot of tools for reverse engineering of apps. For instance, for Java and C Sharp, there are a lot of tools which are going to visualize our classes as boxes and draw arrows between them. So this way we will see their relations. I was thinking to build something like this with, for Angular by using the Angular compiler, of course. And uh, in order to provide a little bit higher API on top, I built a wrapper called, uh, of a state called ngast. With ngast, this is a library that you can very easily parse on Angular project, get all the directives, components, and their metadata, also providers, their relations, pipes, and so on. Let me show you how this looks like with a tool called ngref. In the meantime, I'm also working with the guys from the CompoDoc and the NGD uh, teams in order to collaborate on the tool, but uh, here is a specific implementation that uses NGST. This is an Electron app which allows us to select an Angular project. And uh, yeah, for instance, this TS config. And right after that, it is just going to automatically render the main component of uh, the main uh, module of our application. We, we can explore its dependencies or we can just get into the app module one level deeper. So we can see all the providers within this module. We can just click around. And so let's just go into the user service. The user service has three dependencies, and uh, we can explore them one by one, but maybe the component is going to be even more interesting. So if we go into the component, we can see its dependencies, or we can explore its template, where each individual box is just another element out of the template. Since Layout footer is a component. We can double click on it and see its dependencies or its template. Here is the template of the footer component, which has an A element with a router link inside of it. If we're interested in any particular component, we can just right click on it and open the file where the declaration is contained. And uh, this way, well, we can just keep exploring our code base. Right, well, this is already useful. I've been using it for a few projects, and uh, I saw some interest in the community. And it's kind of fun because it's visual representation of our application, right? 
But we can go one dimension higher. Like we've been representing our app in the two dimensions so far. Let's try the third dimension as well. So, so far we've been always trying to place our source code into our own reality. Let's just create a special reality for our source code instead. Here is another tool, which is an NPM module that I prototyped recently called uh, NG World. So NG World is an NPM module that accepts an Angular project. For instance, Angular CRM system here. And after we run it, it is going to perform the phases of uh, lexical analysis, syntax analysis. Right after that, we're going to get the AST. We're going to transform it a little bit, and we're going to generate some code. So in general, NG World is some kind of unconventional compiler, I guess. Here is what it generated. We have an index.html and uh, a few other things. Let's run it in our favorite browser. OK. <laughs> so we have some sky and it looks like virtual reality. Let's turn around. Okay, we have gardens. Let's go a little bit closer to see what is there on these labels on top. Oh, this is our about component. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is our about module, actually. Let's go inside of the garden and see what we have. We have trees, <laughs> which are named our, our, after our components. And the coolest thing is that if we take a look at their crowns, this is going to be the template of the components, just rendering the th three-dimensional space. <laughs> yeah, we can jump around. <laughs> and explore this world. So if you like our code that much that we want to live with it, we can do that. <laughs> Uh, so the purpose of the today's presentation was to show you these tools and to show you what we can achieve with the Angular compiler. By building on top of it, we can develop tools which are able to transform our application into a much more efficient version of itself, or we can just perform an automated migration. We can even visualize our source code or build something silly, not that useful, but very fun, like generating a virtual reality out of it. The only limitation that we currently have is uh, our own imagination. Thank you very much for your attention.